Morning guys, it's Charlie with Everglades Equipment. Today we're gonna be going over the Z3, the Z5, and the Z7, which are all the residential zero turn mower options. This is kind of gonna be a buyer's guide, so gonna really direct you in the position, hopefully, to figure out which mower you actually need for your property and what you're doing with it. We're gonna go over you know, usability, um, possible attachments and add-ons that you can put on. Okay, so we're gonna start going over the Z3 first just because I wanna kind of go in order. So I have a Z3, Z5, Z7, so going up. So this one, I have all different trim levels here. So this is an R. So if you've watched our previous videos, you probably know, but all John Deere is E, M, and R, starting from the base and going up. So the E is the base model, the M is that middle ground, and the R is the really nice Mac Daddy one, okay? So this is the nicest 48 inch that you can get. So again, this is a 48 inch deck. It's the Excel deep deck. And maybe you've seen the previous video where we did a whole in-depth video on the whole thing, but I'm just gonna kind of do a brief overview so that you can see kind of the differences between them all. Um, so frame size, this is obviously gonna be the smallest zero turn that we have. Um, but as far as usability goes, you know, even lifting up and accessing, you know, everything under the deck is here. And then on that R, you know, comes those upgrades like the floor mats, the LED lights, the bumper, the seat has the armrests, all that good stuff. Um, but as far as actual size, again, this is the smallest one that you can get. So this is really, you're gonna wanna keep it under two acres with this mower. So if you've just got a small residential lot and you're looking for something perfect for your yard, this is it. Okay, this is a Z530M. So this is the middle ground kind of for the Z5. And I don't know if you can tell with me standing in front of it, but this one is a little bit larger than that Z3. So this is gonna be kind of in that six acre realm under that. Um, and you'll see as we get to the Z7, you'll see those differences as well. But this is larger overall, the frame's larger. Um, but as far as usability, you know, they're gonna be the same. They have the same access points. And all of the John Deere's, they're pretty similar. They have some sort of deck lift. So, you know, this one's got the foot lever here and a peg system. So you actually, you know, compress this in with your foot and then you can move this peg to whatever height you want. So it says, you know, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, that, all that good stuff. Um, and the parking brakes and things like that kind of change as you, as you go from model to model. Um, but this one's right here. Um, as you know, on the Z3s, it's integrated into the handle. So when you bring the handles in, your parking brake's off. So this one, to start the machine, you're gonna have to have this parking brake on up here. Um, but as far as the actual controls, they're all pretty similar. So they've all got you know, your ignition, obviously, with your key that you turn, and then they've got a choke and your throttle, which shows the turtle to the rabbit. Um, and it depends model to model on if they're separated or if they're combined into one handle. After we go through each of the models and kind of the basics, we'll kind of get in a little bit deeper into the actual key differences. So this is the Z720E, and again, this has the 60 inch. So you can see pretty well the, the difference in size and the whole machine just compared, just by looking at the deck and how the frame actually gets a lot larger. Um, and this is the E, so this is actually the base of the Z7 models. Um, you can see this, unlike the Z3s, this, even though it's an E, it has the armrests, um, which is pretty nice. The seat is nice and squishy, unlike the Z3 base models. Um, and again, same way. I mean, they all lift up like this. They all have this, you know, compress here to lift the deck. And this one's actually got a dial pretty similar to the Z9. So size of this machine is pretty close to the Z9 commercial unit. So. This is the last option you have in the residential line before you get to the commercial. Okay, so to go into this one a little bit more in depth, and again, this is a Z720E. So this is the base model Z7 you can get. Just to mention this deck again, so I don't know if you've seen, but on the Z9s, they actually have it stamped on there. It's a John Deere only thing. It's our seven iron deck. So all of them are gonna be stamped decks. All John Deere decks are stamped decks. Um, but this one is actually just below the seven. It's a nine gauge, so it's a little bit thinner than the commercial deck, but it's still very thick and very hardy. And if you, I don't know if you can actually see down here, but they actually have, I mean, they're reinforced all the way around with a metal, an actual bar around the whole outside of the deck. So they're very strong. So if you're, you know, 
if you have like a rough bumpy pasture or something like that um, you know and you're mowing I don't know you've got eight acres or something like that and you really just need to mow your pasture and you're worried you know there's a couple rocks or something like that that you're worried you don't want to scrape up your deck or hurt your this is probably a good mower for you okay um, and as far as price goes of course these are vastly vastly different than the Z3 but as you'll, you'll get to see in a little bit, they're a vastly different machine, okay? So just to kind of get into it a little bit, I showed you before, but you know, the, the actual floor lifts up here so you can access the, the whole, you know, on, on top of the deck. You can blow it off, wash it off, whatever you need to do. Uh, your pulleys are all there. And you've got your gauge wheels up front here, the rollers, um, keep that deck from just bashing into the ground. Then this seat, like I said, it's a nice and squishy seat. And as you get up in the levels, like with the R model, you're gonna get even that suspension seat like are on the commercial mowers with that dial in between you. You can actually set it to what you weigh. And then it's it's very squishy. I mean, it'll, it'll bounce you around a little bit just cause it's so squishy. Um, and you can move the seat up and down. And then uh, you've got your fuel gauge here, which is, it's actually just a transparent tank. And it obviously, you know, the lower you, the lower the level is, the less fuel you have there. All right, so this is a Z530M, and it, it does have a rollover protection. I didn't go over that on the Z7, um, but similar to the Z9 commercial mowers, um, starting with the Z5, they actually do have that rollover protection. So if you do accidentally tip it over, you're safe and sound in there. Um, and then just to get into it, I mean the floor, and I know I keep going over this, but it really is nice. The floor lifts up and you can clean out the whole deck, you know, right here, whether it's a blower or a hose, what have you. Um, really nice. And then just because I talked about it on the Z7, this one also has that transparent tank, but actually on your controls, because this is the M model, it's actually going to show you a bar. Um, so right now it's full, so you have full bars. <laughs> Um, and then to get in, the Z7 actually has an integrated parking brake similar to the Z3 that I don't know if you saw the last video, but similar to the Z3. So it's integrated. So when your handles are out, the parking brake's on. This one is actually different. So the parking brake is actually right here. So when it's up, the parking brake is on. So to start the machine, you'd have the parking brake on, turn the key, push the parking brake off, and then you can pull your handles in and drive off. Um, and again, this is, this is a 60 inch deck like we went over, but this is actually a 10 gauge. So it drops down. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but the lower the number, the better in this case. Um, so the nine gauge steel is actually going to be thicker on the Z7 than on the Z5. All right, this is the Z330R. And again, this is the highest level trim package. So this is the nicest 48 inch Z3 you can have. And to kind of re-go over, this one does not have the rollover protection. So if that's something you're, you know, you're worried about, maybe bump up to the Z5. Um, this one you're going to kind of try and keep under that two acre mark. And again, this is, this is a 48 inch deck and this is going to be 12 gauge. And again, the higher the number, the worse in this case. So, you know, as you go up even to the Z9, it's that we're popular for that seven iron deck. It's a seven gauge deck. Okay. So. And again, all of our decks in John Deere World, they're all stamped. So, and I know we get a lot of questions about that actually. We actually see that they do a little better. So with a fabricated deck, when you have those sharp corners and welds, that's actually a pretty bad weak point. And that's a spot, you know, welding is one of those things. It's actually a pretty weak point in the metal. So, you know, rust and things like that, if you've got a buildup of grass in that corner or down here in South Florida specifically, the sugar sand, if you're familiar, it'll, it'll eat away at those welds. So we actually see these stamp decks do very well down here. All right, so we just went over all the residential zero turn options. And just to kind of reiterate, the Z3 to the Z7, really the biggest question that I'm gonna ask you to kind of differentiate which model you need, or at least which series you're gonna get into, is how many acres do you have? And the secondary question is maybe, what are you doing with it? Because if you're mowing maybe once every three weeks or something like that, and you've only got a couple acres, that's obviously gonna put you in, in a different area than if you've got 10 acres and you're mowing every week. So um, that's kind of really the biggest thing that I'm gonna ask is how many acres do you have? What are you doing with it? Maybe what does your property look like? Obviously, if you've got a gate or something like that, that's only, maybe it's only 60 inches, you maybe don't wanna get the mower with a 60 inch deck. It's gonna be a real tight squeeze through there. Um, 
but really that's the biggest thing so just be sure you know have have those answers basically ready for me and maybe if you're I've had people coming in and buying a new property and maybe they don't know all those answers yet so maybe just do some homework before you come into the dealership and maybe know what your property looks like and maybe you've never mowed your yard before so just maybe take a walk around and then come into the dealership Okay, just to summarize, I kind of want to go over a couple questions that I really think would be good for you guys to ask if you're just starting on this journey. The first question and probably the most common question that I get asked is about warranty. So every model behind me has a different warranty and as you go through it, it gets a little bit more complicated. So that's definitely, especially if you're in between a couple different models or maybe in between, you know, I don't know if I need a Z3 or a Z5, I would definitely ask about warranty. And just to kind of briefly go over, all of the Z3s have a three year, uh, 200 hour warranty. And then the Z5s, they actually go to a four year and then all the way up to a 500 hour. And it's, it's whichever one you get to first. So it's either four years or 500 hours on the, the maximum for the five. And it's whichever one you reach first. And then the Z7s are the same four year, but all the way up to a thousand hours on the highest one. All right, so the next question I would ask is about serviceability. So all these machines behind me have a pretty similar service chart. Um, and again, you can see that it's somewhere on the machine, that service chart where it tells you exactly what to do, when to do, or you can always call Everglades and see when, but it's typically a good idea on any machine to get it looked at yearly. Okay, so the next question I would ask, probably the last question, um, is really, do I need a zero turn or do I need a riding mower? And actually our next video is gonna be on all the differences between the riding mowers, so you can watch that next. But really the biggest thing is kind of your property and what you're comfortable with. So, you know, we kind of went over how many acres and all that stuff, but if you've got ponds or something like that, or if you're, you know, you don't really have too many trees and you're used to your tractor that you have the steering wheel with, stick with that. You know, if you're wanting something, something new and you're worried about speed or you've got a lot of trees or you've got some stuff to navigate around, try a zero turn. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Today we went over all the residential zero turns, the Z3, the Z5, and the Z7s. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave any comments if you have any questions or anything below. Thank you.